Hi, my name is Claire, and I am the naturalist intern here at the Calkins Nature Area. And today I am in the reptile room where I'm going to be talking to you guys about reptiles and in particular snakes. So reptiles are animals that lay their eggs on land and they are cold blooded which means that they get their heat from outside sources like the sun. Now in the reptile room we have four different types of snakes. We have a corn snake, a fox snake, a milk snake, and a hognose snake. Now there are two different ways that snakes eat their food. You have a constrictor which will squeeze its prey and a venomous snake which will put venom into its prey. Now when snakes eat food, they do grow, and when they grow, their skin doesn't grow with them, so they have to shed it off. Here is skin from our corn snake, Ruby. Now this does not hurt them, and snakes don't have eyelids. So when they shed their skin, they also shed the scales on their eyes, so during this time they can't see very well. Um, and if, here at Calkins, if the pieces, like if the skin comes off in multiple pieces, we know that they're not healthy or that the humidity or moisture in the air isn't high enough for them. Next, I'm going to take you guys into the back and talk to you about what we feed our snakes here at the Nature Center. So our fox snake and our corn snake, since they are larger snakes, we give them a full grown adult mouse and we have to thaw it out because uh, they cannot chew their food and they are constrictors so they'll squeeze it and then they'll swallow it whole and we give them one about once a week so every Tuesday if we had a medium sized snake we would give them one of these uh, but we don't typically we want the head of the mouse to be the same size as the mouth of the snake so they can swallow it whole smoothly and then our baby snakes we give them uh, baby mice which are called pinkies and they're in the bag uh, we do have to thaw them all out though so they can squeeze them as well because they are constrictors. Uh, well, our milk snake is a constrictor. Our hognose snake is uh, mildly venomous but it is non toxic to humans and it'll still eat mice. So the first snake that I'm going to talk to you guys about today is our western fox snake that we have here in the reptile room. This fox snake, uh, it lives all throughout Iowa, being the most common constricting snake, and it is protected from being collected or killed. Now you can see that he has lots of spots on him. Uh, this breaks up his profile, so when he's on the ground, he's harder to see. They are non-venomous, and their colors can be golden yellow to a deep brown. And when threatened, their tail glands will produce a milk musky smell that is similar to a red fox. So this is how they get their name, fox snake. And some will move their tail like a rattlesnake to scare enemies. So if you're uh, walking through the woods and you see a snake like this rattling its tail, you know that it's a fox snake. So the next snake I'm going to talk to you guys about is the eastern milk snake. Now milk snakes like habitats uh, that are prairies or uh, rocky outcroppings, so rocky hillsides, which is why his enclosure has lots of rocks in there because that is his preferred habitat. As you can see, his vibrant red colors uh, sets him apart from a lot of snakes in Iowa because a lot of our other snakes don't have those bright colors. They uh, are constrictors and opportunistic feeders, which means they'll eat about anything they can get a hold of, like eggs and fish and frogs and rodents. And something cool about these guys is that when they shed their skin, uh, the markings on their body come off on the skin. So you can see the lines from um, his body. Our last snake that I'm going to talk to you guys about today is our corn snake, Ruby. Corn snakes are not found in Iowa, but they are found in the southern U.S. Uh, if you could see her tummy, they are called corn snakes because the bottom of her belly looks like uh, Indian corn or a piece of maize, so it's got black and yellow spots. They are constrictors, which means that they squeeze their prey. And these guys are very generalist, so you can find them all over in the southern United States. Let me tell you why snakes are important to keep around. So here's an example. It's a prairie rattlesnake, and they are venomous. They are becoming endangered in Iowa because people kill them on site uh, because of their venom and because of their loss of habitats. 
but snakes actually play a large part in keeping an ecosystem healthy. So they are a predator species, which means that they eat insects that would harm your gardens, and with the help of snakes, we can use less insecticides. They also eat rodents, uh, so they keep them out of your homes and out of your crops, and rodents spread diseases, so with the help of snakes, you have less diseases as well. And lastly, they are a prey species, so they're an important part of a raptor's diet, like hawks, as well as mammals like raccoons. So the next time that you see a snake, think twice before killing it because they are a very important part of our ecosystem. I hope you guys learned a lot about snakes today. Uh, stay tuned later this week to watch our video on the turtles that we have here at Calkins. And you can keep up to date and find out more information on snakes and turtles at, uh, if you follow us on social media like Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Or check our website at hardencountyconservation.com for more information.